Hey, hi, what's going on guys? Welcome to part fifth on creating mobile web applications using jQuery mobile. So guys, in this particular video, we're gonna write our logic for the login page where we're gonna authenticate username and your password with our database credentials. And on the basis of that, we're gonna make a decision whether they're gonna see our application or they cannot. But guys, before that, uh, let me tell you one thing, uh, till now, we are developing this particular application on a desktop so we don't have any way to find out whether it's gonna behave the same way on a mobile phone or not and guys as far as designing part is concerned we can you know resize the browser window and we can see how actually it's gonna look on a smaller screen but we don't have any way to find out is it gonna behave the same way on a mobile phone or not so guys, for that, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna download uh, Android emulator and we're gonna use that to test whether it's behaving the right way or not. So guys, what you need to do is go ahead, make a search call, in, uh, like download Android SDK, okay, SDK. And guys, for this, you don't have to learn any like anything related to Java or Android. All you need to do is uh, you need to download their emulator. So uh, you can go ahead and you can say download Android SDK. You can click on the very first line. So as of today, uh, they're gonna you know show us the latest version. So I would just wait for a second and let's see what they have for us. So here it says you know download the SDK for Windows. So you can click on this particular link. It's gonna you know give you an exe file i believe yep it's gonna give you an installer exe file you can save it you can run everything and save it to you know a convenient location from where you can easily access all the files guys uh after you're gonna you know uh install everything you're gonna get something quite similar to this okay and guys as it's gonna be a fresh installation so you might need to you know uh I would say download a lot of libraries uh, depending upon uh, what they are suggesting you but once everything would be done uh, you need to click on this particular thing called avdmanager.exe so just click on this particular link uh, it's gonna show you this particular dialog uh, like, now there are chances they're gonna you know give you some default I would say uh, avd setup for you so but if it's there just leave it create a new one uh, I'm gonna name it to jQuery mobile okay so here I'm gonna say jQuery uh, where is my M here I'm gonna say jQuery mobile for the target I'm gonna say Android 4.0.3 guys it hardly matters because we're not gonna do anything with Android all we need is their emulator so once that done here you can click uh, you know create the AVD it's done here select it and go ahead and start it so here I'm gonna say launch now guys it's gonna take a couple of seconds for this you know I would say uh, the emulator to get started and to do actually to be in a position so that we can do anything with it so for for that point of time I'm gonna you know uh, pause the video okay guys so my Android device is ready to go uh, guys in order to access any application that's running on a local server like WAMP or XAMPP or LAMP whatever you have uh, all you need to do is uh, go ahead click this particular you know I would say search engine on the top and here say HTTP and here I'm gonna say 10.0.2.2 okay guys go ahead and click enter and it's gonna you know show you the default screen of your I would say local server so I'm just gonna wait for a couple of seconds so it's done here it shows me all the listed folders out here I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna browse the one called jQuery mobile out here so I'm gonna click on it and uh, let's see what we're gonna get okay it's not gonna show us anything because uh, we have to you know go to login.php file so come come here So finally we have our application out here which is looking quite ugly. The reason behind that is it's too small for anyone to actually see or to do what exactly going on. So guys uh, now what next we're gonna do is 
we will have to take care of it because right now uh, this particular mobile is reading it like in desktop application and that's the reason it's you know quite smaller so uh, what we need to do is <clears throat> uh, we need to go back to our file and here I'm gonna go to login.php here guys I have to say mm, meta and here I'm gonna say viewport like the meta name gonna be viewport the content gonna be worth equals to <clears throat> Uh, device worth I believe and next thing I have to say uh, scale or probably I think it's gotta be initial scale uh, they're gonna be equals to one okay let's see if this particular thing gonna work for us so I'm gonna go back to our Android device and here I'm gonna say refresh and let's see what we have Okay, finally guys, now if you will notice, it's looking quite better the way it was looking earlier. A user can easily see, okay, I need to enter my username, so let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to say my name here, my um, password, let's keep it to my name again, and here I'm going to say login. <clears throat> so it says you want to remember it, yep, I want to remember it. And guys, you will notice we will have we have actually have you know the same way of success messages the way we were getting on the desktop. So at least till now everything is you know uh, quite expected the way we want it to be. So I'm you know I'm just gonna you know minimize it. And the guys here, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna close this particular fold. Okay, sorry for that. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna go to my lips folder inside the auth.php file. Uh, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say include our manage users class. So here I'm gonna say include course slash class dot manage users. Uh, here I'm gonna say the init that's actually gonna be you know the instance variable for our class called manage users. Okay. Then I'm gonna say init. Uh, they're gonna be. Oh my gosh. You know what? We are actually like we don't have any function to login the user that's too bad here I'm gonna say function login users here I'm gonna say their username and their password that's too bad so here I'm gonna say dollar query gonna be equals to dollar this uh, query probably dollar this link query and here I'm gonna say select all from users where username is equal to dollar username and password we're gonna be equal to dollar password uh, dollar password here and I'm gonna say limit it to one only because we can only have one user with a unique username so here I'm gonna say dollar row count. Here I'm gonna say dollar query row count. And here I'm gonna say return dollar row count. So guys, if this particular variable row count is equals to one, that means uh, the username and the password entered by the user is correct. And we can you know actually go ahead and we can redirect them to the actual page where they can actually do something with their surveys. So I believe that's all for login users. Now we need to go ahead and we need to create a database. So uh, here I'm going to say localhost. I'm going to go to PHP my admin. And guys, here I'm going to create a new database. I'm going to name it to jQuery Mobile. Okay, I'm going to create it. Uh, here we go here it says jQuery mobile and guys if you will notice what it actually did for us oh it's actually the wrong name like here it says like it's actually missing the Y here so I'm gonna drop this particular database and I'm gonna recreate one more so here I'm gonna say jQuery mobile and come back here here it says jquery mobile now i'm going to create a table called users let's say we need uh, eight number of fields <clears throat> here 
here I'm gonna say we need an ID we need their username we need their first name uh, their last name uh, here are gonna be their email their password uh, the IP address and what else we need uh, their user level that's really important and I believe that's all here I'm gonna say a word chart to 40 the IP address is gonna be a word chart to 20 uh, the password gonna be a word chart to let's say 150 the email gonna be 152 uh, the last name let's say a word chart 250 first name again 250 and a username again 200 and let's make first name and last name 200 either so that's all uh, for the ID we need to say uh, it's gonna be an auto increment and a primary key so that it will increase every time we're gonna have a new user and it's never gonna duplicate itself so I'm gonna hit save here and finally we have our very first table lying out here which says user so guys what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just you know insert a value inside it so here I'm gonna say insert uh, for the username I'm gonna say my name for the first name I'm gonna say my name last name I'm gonna be my name for the email I'm gonna enter the template just support email okay and the password I'm gonna say my name and we're gonna make it an md5 hash okay uh, for the IP address let's leave it to null and for the user level I'm gonna say I'm an admin okay so I can you know save it and guys if you will notice you know uh, the database name we have it's you know everything in lowercase but you know, at the time we created the class we said the M to be an uppercase so I'm gonna you know uh, make it you know a lowercase again here so uh, that's done uh, now next thing we can do is we can come back to our auth file and uh, we can call the function called username and password so let's come here and call this function so here I'm gonna say <coughs> Uh, wrap everything inside if dollar post like if there is a post request uh, then I'm gonna say dollar username gonna be equals to dollar post username or was that a get request I'm not even sure about it so let me do some this this uh, no, it was a post request. So here it says password and username. That's fine. So here I'm going to say username and the password. I'm going to say dollar post password. Okay. So I believe that's done. <clears throat> now, again, guys, if you want, we can make a check what, like on our server end or I would say with our PHP that they are not empty. Here I'm going to say if empty dollar username or empty dollar password okay like this here I can say echo all fields are required okay uh, else I can put it up here and here I can say dollar password gonna be equals to md5 dollar password like this okay and here we can pass in the username and we can pass in the password one more thing we can do is I can say trim like if you know there are gonna be any kind of uh, white spaces we actually gonna you know take them away so here I'm gonna say trim one more time so guys I believe that's done I can create a variable call here here call login equals to uh, the function call login user and here I'm gonna say if dollar login is equals to equals to one that means the user was able to log in and I'm gonna say echo uh, true okay and else I'm gonna say invalid credentials I'm gonna say echo invalid credentials okay so guys let's refresh it and let's enter my username what's well, going to uppercase Okay, I'm gonna remove the password first. Again, it's doing the same thing. Oh my gosh. Because you know I have it saved in my I would say cookies, that's the reason it's you know automatically pulling it up. So here I'm gonna enter my now I'm gonna hit login. It says include once core slash. So uh, there is an error 
we need to include it like this refresh the page it says you will be redirected in a moment because we have actually you know enter the right credentials so let me enter you know some blah 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 plus password it says invalid credentials so that's awesome guys till now we are able to you know uh, find out whether the user is entering their right credentials or not so I'm gonna enter my password here it says you will be redirected in a moment we're gonna you know check the same thing on an Android device that's actually gonna behave like a mobile phone not like a desktop browser so I'm gonna refresh the page out here and it's done so here it shows my name and, and the password and here I'm gonna say login let's see oh awesome here it says you will be redirected in a moment let's try with you know some crap password okay I have you know one more <clears throat> a out there so I'm gonna hit login here here it says invalid credentials that's awesome guys now guys every time a user is able to you know log in what we need to do is we need to actually redirect them after showing this particular redirect message so here it says if response is equals to true show them a success message then I'm gonna say set time out okay like just wait for a couple of seconds and here we're gonna say how many seconds let's say two seconds and we're gonna run a jQuery mobile function so here I'm gonna say dollar mobile uh, change or I believe it needs to be dollar mobile dot change page if I'm not wrong like this uh, I'm gonna say change the page to index.php and guys we're gonna you know have a transition to uh, slide okay so it's actually gonna slide so first test it on our Mozilla Firefox browser then we're gonna you know move to Android device so I'm gonna refresh it says you will be redirected in a moment and uh, actually nothing happened because here it says dollar dot mobile dot change page is not a function so uh, it's actually my bad I have you know named it in the wrong way let's try you know a P in an uppercase yeah that was a problem so guys if you will notice it gave a very nice transition and it sent me to a file called index.php which is undefined now if I'm gonna go back uh, actually I created an empty file here called index.php and according to jQuery mobile it does not have the valid markup it, it needs to have that's the reason it says undefined here but that's not a problem we can take care of it later let's try the same thing on our Android device here so I'm gonna refresh the page and let's see if we have the same magic out here or not so I have my username and password there I'm gonna remove that extra a from the back oh my gosh it's, it's too slow so I'm gonna remove it and here I'm gonna hit login let's see here it says you will be redirected in a moment and nothing actually happened out here let's refresh the page one more time then we're gonna check out why it's not doing it so it's done I have my username password here let's see what's gonna happen now who will be redirected in a moment oh actually it did it so if you will notice there was you know <clears throat> a slight transition out there and it sent me to the same page where it shows in the browser now guys don't worry if your Android emulator is you know a bit slower because uh, it is not the actual way it's gonna behave on an actual mobile phone uh, it's gonna you know run a quite faster the way it's doing it right now on this particular emulator so I believe guys that's all from this particular video and do not forget to be our Twitter follower to stay updated and I'm gonna see you guys next time Goodbye.